Alrighty, this is a tutorial on how to list an apartment on Buildium, Tenant Turner, and Zillow. Today we're going to be listing 1051 Washington Street in Easton. This is unit number three. So one assumption here is first that we have photos of the apartment. This is something that at the moment I'm doing, so I'm receiving the photos, editing them, and dropping them into a folder that we can then transfer to the listings. First things first is to set up the listing on Buildium. As you know, Buildium is the center point, the, the brain of the operation. So in order for our system to operate correctly, we need this listing set up on Buildium first and foremost. <clears throat> in order to do that, you need to go to leasing and listings. We're actually going to be using one of the existing listings as a point of reference for the current listing that we're putting up. So I'm going to open up this listing for 1236 Walnut Street in another tab. And then I'm going to go to unlisted units. I'm going to filter by 1051 Washington, wherever it is. There it is. And I'm going to choose the one here, unit number three. It says vacant. So here's the page to set up a listing. It's pretty straightforward. I'll break down each of the individual pieces. We're going to be listing this unit for 1175. This is a one bed, one bath, and I actually need to find out what the square footage is, but. Anyway, so at the top here, you're going to be inputting the rent. Typically, we do a security deposit of one month's rent, and this is available right away. Typically, in this situation, we're going to try and figure out a date that's either the first or the 15th or 16th of the month to make it look like it's a lease that's coming due and you know to accommodate for leases that typically end at the end of a month or in the middle of a month. So we're gonna choose a date. Actually, let's go with March 13th, just because that gives people a week to see it. And we can set up a, a March 13th uh, availability date. Do not hit the post listing button until the rest of this stuff has been filled out. So the next section here, unit details. This is the one of the most important parts of the listing. So. The description is really important because it gives the, the candidate, the person going on Zillow or Zumper or wherever they are, a high level overview on the apartment. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull the description from 1236 Walnut Street. And I'm actually going to do something here. I'm going to combine this with because we've listed other units in this building in 1051 Washington. So I'm going to see what I said about the building and the location and use that same description in this listing. So if I go to unit number six, this is a, a unit that we leased out a couple of months ago. I'm going to copy the top part of the description and I'm going to drop it here. Let's give it a quick read. Welcome to 1051 Washington Street. This spacious three bedroom, one bathroom apartment is centrally located on the north side of Easton, about a 15 minute walk from downtown. Take advantage of all the restaurants in the immediate area. This apartment is equipped with a beautiful chandelier in the living room and updated vinyl plank flooring. Okay, so this doesn't exactly describe this unit, so we're gonna have to change a couple things. The unit is larger for the uh, for the, the fact that it's a one bedroom. So we're going to stick with this this spacious. <clears throat> what you'll see over time is that we typically use the similar adjectives and structure when using this when putting together this description. A few adjectives that we'll use to describe an apartment is 
about the size. So we'll say either spacious if it's a large one or cozy if it's on the smaller side. So that's going to take something that's could be perceived as a negative, a, a small apartment, and we're going to make it seem positive by calling it cozy. Spacious is um, kind of self-justifying. It's everybody wants a spacious apartment, so we use that word pretty often. We'll also use newly updated. We'll use luxury. We'll use um, uh, vintage if it's an older product and it has a lot of character to it. There's really a handful of adjectives that we tend to use. Those are pretty much all of them. Like, let's look at what we said for 1236 Walnut. This was newly updated, right? So, again, spacious, cozy, vintage, newly updated. Um, uh, you know, those are those are pretty much what we're what we're talking about. So, this spacious one bedroom, one bathroom apartment is we're going to stick with. So, in the description, we want to talk about high level the uh, the size of the apartment. So, how many beds and baths, and what's the size of it. Talk about its location, mention something about its proximity to certain landmarks. So this is centrally located on the north side of Easton, about a 15-minute walk from downtown. We know that Easton downtown is a really nice area, very walkable, has nice restaurants, has a park. It's somewhere where people like to hang out. Now, the stretch from downtown to where 1051 Washington is may not be the nicest, but we still want to give people this feeling that they can walk downtown and they can go experience what downtown Easton has to offer. So we're going to talk about that often. So what I'll do is I'll pull up Google Maps if this is a new listing that I'm not totally familiar about the, uh, the location and the building itself, is I'll pull up Google Maps and I'll try and find stuff to talk about. So what you look for, you look for bars and restaurants, you look for parks, you look for certain attractions, like you might be by the water, um, you know, or by downtown. These are typically the big things to look for. So the location of this isn't fantastic. It's, there's not really any parks. It's kind of by water, but people don't go down here on the Lehigh river, but I'm seeing some restaurants in the area. Um, lots of Hispanic restaurants, obviously. And like I said, it's, you know, a, a, it's a little bit of a walk from downtown, but it's, uh, it's something that can be mentioned. Okay. So now that we've covered the location, now we need to talk about the updates that have, that have been done to the apartment. So what does this apartment have to offer? Let's, let's take a look at a couple of photos and try and deduce what, what there is to talk about. To be honest with you, there's not really a ton. This is not one of our nicest units. So we're going to need to essentially work with what we have. Some units will be a lot more straightforward to, to look at. So what we can talk about is the floors look decently nice. So we can talk about how you have vinyl plank floors and then the unit has been newly painted. So I think that's something so those are the things that we're going to touch on here. So this apartment is equipped with a beautiful chandelier in the living room and updated vinyl plank flooring. So what I'd say is this building is equipped with updated vinyl plank flooring and fresh paint throughout. Use the word fresh for paint, new paint, just use fresh paint, right? It's a newly painted unit. Okay, next section is the meat and potatoes. Details below. So in this section, you want to talk about parking. You want to talk about utilities. You want to talk about laundry, smoking, pets in a bullet point fashion so that people can quickly digest information and use it to make a decision. So first of all, this is remember, this is a copy and paste from 1236 Walnut Street. So we're gonna, there's, there's no parking in this building. And this is something that you can find out either from asking about it on Slack or finding out the information yourself from the property rules master sheet. So we're gonna search by 1051 Washington. We're gonna take a look at 
well, what's the parking situation? What's the utility situation? Um, laundry, all that stuff is available here. So let's go piece by piece. First thing is what's included in the rent. So if we look at the property rules master sheet, <clears throat> this is actually, uh, this actually needs to be updated. So what we're doing for all units in this building is implementing RUBS. This is Ratio Utility Billing System. This is what RUBS stands for. It's an acronym. This, so we'll, we'll update this. But, oh, actually this is broken down one by one. So if we look at Unit 3, you see that they're going to pay their own electric because it says yes here. They're going to pay their own heat, which says yes. And then they're going to pay water, sewer, and, and trash, which is... Uh, paid back by rubs. So we're going to say here, tenant pays all utilities, electricity, gas, water, sewer, and trash. So we've covered utilities. We're going to talk about parking. We don't want to say there is no parking because that just sounds negative and kind of uh, definitive. And we want to give the idea that there are options for parking, just not immediate parking in the area. So a theme that you are probably sensing here is that we try to spin things in a positive light, look at everything positively, never say the word no. I mean, even though you see no said here, we're actually going to change that. But never say the word no, always say it in a different way that doesn't make it sound like no and make it sound like there's potential opportunity for yes. And this is just kind of the basics of salesmanship. So, on-street parking is available in the immediate area. This is information that can be accessed by looking at the master sheet. Parking availability, street parking. No parking spaces on the premises. The next thing is laundry. So if you look at the property rules master sheet, you see there's coin-operated laundry in the basement. So we're gonna mention that instead of saying there are no hookups available. So we're gonna say uh, coin-operated laundry uh, in the building. Don't say basement. Basement sounds dirty, creepy. Just say in the building, right? No matter where it is, they have access to it and it's a sales point. We, the, the pet rules in, is a building by building basis. Typically with these lower uh, lower class, lower income type apartments, which 1051 Washington definitely is. We are, uh, we're going to accept pets just to open up the buyer pool. And honestly, the, the unit is not, in ter is not in this great shape that we want to protect it. So we're going to say that max of two pets, we typically want small dogs because small dogs make less of a ruckus and people complain about them less and there's less liability. So we do small dogs and we do cats. And again, this will be different case by case based on the apartment. Every one of our apartments is a non-smoking home. We established this. This is mentioned in the lease. It's important to, to pitch it this way because we want the tenant to feel like they're not walking into like a smoke box, you know, and, and that we value a, a home that's non-smoking and is clean. And then there's a call to action. We've tested multiple calls to action with listings, uh, but what we found is that because this listing is going to syndicate to several platforms that each one has its own call to action. Zillow has its own call to action. Realtor.com has its own call to action. So we keep it very clean and simple. We say, please contact us to schedule a showing. See you soon. And intuitively, that syndication platform will establish that call to action for them. And we can show what that looks like. <clears throat> As stated this is a very hispanic market so we like to offer information in spanish as well i've put this together so bear with me my spanish may not be completely uh you know correct and accurate we're going to assume all right because this is in english maybe they didn't really read all of it and they skipped to the spanish part so we're going to talk about um you know you know, Pintura Fresca, uh, this says trash is included in the rent, of course not. Uh, usted paga todos los utilidades. 
we'll say what kind of heat it is because uh, we should probably say this in English also, but um, 